Are you ready to enter your bills into QuickBooks? I am so excited about this video because I feel like it's something I get asked often. How do you enter a bill properly? And how do you pay a bill, especially with a credit card? And so many people make mistakes with this, so I wanna help you. If we've never met before, hello, I'm Candace Camper, and I love to help business owners and bookkeepers create confidence with QuickBooks. And today we are gonna be diving in to QuickBooks Online. If you are looking for the desktop version, go up above or down below. I have a separate video for that. So when we're talking about entering in bills, what you wanna consider is that entering bills is a two-step process. You don't have to use the enter bills feature in QuickBooks. It allows you though, when you do use it, to have what's called accounts payable. So remember, entering bills you enter a bill, then you pay the bill. So it's two steps. There are easier ways to enter in your expenses into QuickBooks, but if you're an accrual-based business or you want reports that show you what you're gonna owe in the future, then bills could be a perfect solution for you. Okay, so just know that. Let's jump in and look around a little bit. So if you're using the, this is the accountant view. If you're using the business view, it might say bookkeeping over here, but no matter which version you're using, you can go up here to the plus and click on bill. Okay, so this is how we're going to enter a bill or do what we call accounts payable. So remember that the first step is vendors. So vendors, I love to teach this inside Commons QuickBooks. If you're looking for more of a how-to tutorial on overall QuickBooks, I recommend checking out my Commons QuickBooks program. But vendors are the people and places you spend money. So when you're looking over here and you see expenses, you'll see vendors. If you click on the plus, you'll see vendors here. You know you're in the right place. So when you go to spend money or enter in the money that you spent, make sure that you're choosing a vendor, okay? Not a customer. If you have a vendor and a customer that are the same name, what you wanna do is just switch their name up a little bit. That's a quick bo bonus tip. For you all right so we're gonna go in here we're gonna say Cal telephone so we received a bill from our telephone company we want to enter it in so that we can pay it later so then you have your address here you can add that if you want to to track their address or if you need to mail an actual check-in but you don't have to have an address if you don't want to terms and conditions this is going to be is it due upon receipt is it net in 10 net in 15 do you get a discount if you pay it off early you're gonna set that up all in your terms then over here, you're going to enter your bill. So let's say that it's for December 7th. Then you're gonna have it due on. So remember we said due on receipt. If we said net 10, you'll notice it changes out 10 days. So that's how terms work. If you had a bill number, you would enter here, the invoice number or the bill number. If you're using tax, you'd enter that in here. And then you're gonna come down and you're going to see your categories. Remember that if when you're using bills, you want to go straight to an expense category, a cost of goods category, you're gonna use categories. If you wanna use items because you're tracking inventory, then you're going to wanna to use the items category and make sure it's set up properly to go towards the expense expenses the way it's built out, okay? Let's keep it super simple today and let's just focus on category. So the reason that this is important is it's how it's going to show up on your profit and loss. So when we enter the bill from Cal Telephone, we wanna make sure that you put it towards where you wanna see it on your profit and loss. In this example, we're gonna do it under utilities and a sub account telephone, okay? Then we're gonna enter in the amount of the bill. If you wanna add a description, you can. If you wanna make it billable so that you can move it forward to the customer, the customer reimbursing you for something, you could do that. In this example, we're not gonna do that. If it needed to have tax included, you could check mark that. If you needed to say that you spent this money, say you're doing job costing, and you wanna track which customer you were paying this bill for, if that was your example, you would put that there. I'm telling you how these are used, even if it doesn't apply to this exact example, so you understand it for the future. Okay, we already talked about items. Then if you have a memo, you can add it. If you wanna add an attachment, you can do that as well. Now remember, just with like checks or anything else, expenses that you're entering into your QuickBooks, you can break down more than one category. So if anytime you have a bill and you wanna put it into different types of categories, maybe you went and bought some supplies and they go to different customers, you can add different lines. 
because I'm just doing the telephone bill and I'm only putting to one expense, I'm only gonna have one line. I'm gonna verify that the amount I like, the amount due here, is going to summarize from all of the lines that you total, okay? Then if you ever need to clear it, you can hit clear or cancel. Up here on the top left, you get a little icon that has what have you done in the past. This is a sample file, so these are all the ones from the past that have been entered. And then over here at the bottom, you can make it reoccurring so that it will go back, every, it'll redo this bill every single month if that's what you want. We're going to hit uh, leave without saving, I'm gonna hit yes. I'm gonna have to go back and re-enter it real quick. Give me just a second. Okay, perfect. So I've re-entered all the data. I made up the um, bill number, so it might be slightly different in the date, but I just entered the information in there and the bill, okay? So you can come in here and do reoccurring. You can come over here and see what these are by clicking the little drop down. You can schedule the payment to be paid out for you from QuickBooks, or you can click save and new, which just gives you the option to enter another one. Save and close, which will close this one, or you can click save as well. So I'm gonna actually click save and close because I'm gonna go in and now show you how to pay the bill. So now when you come into your vendors and you scroll down to Cal Telephone, you'll see that 5650 is what is owed. If you click on it, it'll actually bring up Cal Telephone and all the details, everything that's happened in the past. Now the whole reason that we create accounts payable or we enter bills is typically for the reports that it gives you. You want to scroll down to what you owe, which is going to be down here. You're going to see unpaid bills, vendor balance detail. You also have your accounts payable. So we're just going to do accounts payable summary. And this is the benefit of entering in your bills. You come in here and you actually can see Cal Telephone, the current balance, and it's under balance because the way accounts payable aging report works is it does it based off timeframes that you choose up here on the top of your report. Okay, so we're saying that we owe it in the future. To actually pay the bill, we're gonna go to the plus. There's different ways you can do it, but from the plus you can do it, or you can do it straight from inside the vendor. We're gonna click pay bills. You're gonna choose the date that you wanna pay the bill on. So we're gonna future date it to, let's say December 4th. You are going to choose how you wanna pay it. So this is if you're using a credit card, you choose a credit card. If you have a bank account, you would choose a bank account here depending on how you wanna pay it, which accounts you have set up in your QuickBooks. So if you haven't set up an account, you're gonna to wanna to do that first. If you need help with doing that, as I said before, Commons QuickBooks, I teach all of this in even more detail. So then you come over here, you're gonna click Cal Telephone. You're gonna have the reference number or the bill number. If you have multiple bills, you'd select them all. The open balance, and then you're gonna say what you're gonna pay. Now, if you decide to pay the bill in three different installments or however you're gonna do it, you would actually enter in the amount that you paid. So say you're only paying 50 on this, you'd say 50. If you wanna pay the full amount, you'd put in the full amount, all right? Pretty easy, right? And then you come over here. Everything's easy when somebody walks you through it. Um, you're gonna come over here, and when you click away, you'll see what you have going on. And then over here, your total payment that's gonna go out, current balance in your, this is on a credit card, so the credit card balance is 157. After we make these payments, it'll be this and this will be the new balance on that credit card. If it was a bank account, it would tell you what will be in your account, how much money you had, so you see if you have the money to pay it or not, okay? Then to process it, we're just gonna click save. So then we're gonna go ahead and click the X. We've now processed the payment. If we go in to our vendor and we go down to Cal Telephone, you'll see the balance is now zero. If we click on it, we see not only the bill that we entered here, we see when we paid it here and it will zero each other out. We can see the view details and here it will show that the bill payment was paid with a credit card. Now what some people will do, you do not want to do this. I want to give you some disclaimers here is that they'll come in and they'll think that they can just write a check when they've entered a bill. So with QuickBooks online specifically, it'll give you a warning with desktop. It doesn't give you a warning. So make sure that if you're entering a bill that you use the bill payment feature or that you at least turn it into a bill payment and it will give you a notification. Because what I sometimes see people doing and making mistakes is then they'll go in and write a check. They've already paid the bill, but maybe it comes through the bank feed and you didn't realize it. And you come in here and you go, well, it was a credit card charge, so it wouldn't be a bill, but let's say it is. You paid it with the bank. You come in here, you say check, you do it again, and you come down here 
when it actually clears the bank and enter it again as a telephone and the amount you paid and then you go, oh no, why does it say the exact same amount twice? Those are mistakes that you made. If you find that you have that where when you're going through your bills, it shows that you owe vendors that you actually do not owe, I highly recommend checking out our cleaning up QuickBooks workshop because there's specific strategies depending off of your current tax year or a prior tax year to fixing those up. But now you know how to enter in a bill, pay it with a check or a credit card, it's up to you. But if you're entering a bill, what do you wanna use? A bill payment. That is gonna save you from a nightmare in the future. I promise you that, okay? Now when you're in there and you're entering your transactions, if it was already entered, it will give you a notification that it's a bill. Just make sure that you're paying it properly if you're using bank feeds. If you find that you have balances on your credit cards or in your vendor center and you know you don't actually owe those balances or you're not sure if you have them, I would recommend checking out our Cleaning Up QuickBooks workshop because I help you identify if you have mistakes and then I can give you guidance on additional training resources that we have to help you clean them up. So go in, start entering in your bills, process the payment properly, and let me know down below, is this something new? Is this a big aha? Do you want to use enter bills? Or now that you know it's a two-step process, are you thinking that you want to go just with bank feeds or directly in and entering the check or entering in the expenses? Remember, entering bills is great if you are an accrual-based business it's not necessary. You don't have to do it if you're a cash-based business. Okay, if you want to know more about that, check out my additional training resources. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for being here. If you don't want to miss any of these tips or tricks, make sure to go up above or down below. We will send them straight to your inbox. And if any of the trainings that I've talked about, you're like, oh yeah, I definitely want to learn how to customize QuickBooks to your business, check out our workshop. Or if you're like, ah, oh, I know how to enter it and write pretty much, but what I really need help with is cleaning up. Check out our Cleaning Up QuickBooks workshop. I can't wait to see you soon. Thank you so much for being part of my community. Have a great day. Toodaloo, bye. <laughs>